welcome to Share Ranch, where I talk about movies, TV shows, and most of these things that annoy me. Today I'm joined by horror and stuff to discuss how people cling to classic horror as someone just shoved to the side modern horror. Hey, how's it going? You doing all right today, Shay? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing good, man. Yeah, I, I think that when people, people in this that love this genre tend to like latch on to the classics that they grew up with or that they believe are the the end all be all like this started it so therefore it's the best instead of you know growing up and understanding like the the evolution of the genre and it is a huge evolution you know there was uh there was a big, there was a long time period of people not giving horror the time of day, you know, producers and directors, actors, everybody was like, that's the, the junk genre, like only B-list actors are going to act in it or, you know, new up and coming people just to get their start. You know, no A-list actor is going to go in their prime and go act in a, in a horror movie, but that's not that's not the case anymore. You know, we have an amazing uh, cast and talent and directors just, I mean, look at Ty West and X and Pearl and these movies and what a 24 is doing by staying out of director's way and letting them create just these amazing films. And yeah, you know, people, my biggest one that, people talk about is like the original exorcist which i think is one of the yeah. most boring movies ever made you know <laughs> but i get yeah. it i get why people love it but at the same time i'm i watch it i'm just like this is so boring you know yeah i completely agree i mean there's there's one film which like just i can understand why people latch onto it so much and that is just if i can get off my wall about a gun dog or something um if I, the original scream oh uh, the, people are obsessed with this thing one of the most consistent franchises you know uh, i do agree with that like scream is extremely consistent across the board there's not a bad movie in the bunch but i you know i love six was so good until the end but yeah. i think that movie endings are just bad in general for the most part you know, so I, I really don't judge a movie based on its ending nine times out of ten. I, <laughs> you know, well, it, I'm, I'm like the kind of person who likes to see something that happens after the ending of a movie, which is why I love Shaun the Dead so much. Because you see the end of the movie, they get like taken away by all the military people. Mm. Then you see them just living their normal days and like zombies are still a thing. Oh, yeah. Shaun of the Dead is like in my top top 15 it if not my top 10 horror movie. I love Shaun of the Dead. Absolutely love it. I know Hot Fuzz is, is if you, you're talking about not just horror films, if you're talking about some of my favorite films of all time, Hot Fuzz is actually in my top 10. I, I, yeah. I love them. People kind of just disregard The World's End, but that film's kind of good as well. Right? It is good. It's just not, like it's, you watch it and you're like, this is a good movie. And then you watch the other two and you're like, I mean, like, there's no comparison, really. They're, Hot Fuzz is one of the greatest movies ever made, in my opinion. <laughs> Love that movie. But, yeah, I, you know, I, like, the original Exorcist and the, the original Halloween, it, the Halloween franchise is one, of my, is one of my favorite franchises. I don't really have a specific favorite, but I, I love the Halloween movies. Um, but I personally think that the 2018 uh, Halloween 2018 is yeah. m that's my favorite of the Halloween movies. And I love the new trilogy. I know a lot of people either loved or hated the new trilogy of, of films. Um, Halloween kills was a little, little odd, you know, but it, it was that middle movie. So it had the, you know, it was the it middle was, movie. So it just had weird. The black sheep of the bunch, basically. Yeah. Yeah, but Halloween ends, man. If 
to be honest, I think that if I forget the 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 kid's name, Corey, uh, Corey, yeah, uh, if they would have just been like, Corey's the new killer, you know, and if he made like donned the mask and he was just the new Michael or something, like I think that probably would have made me just absolutely love that movie because the end was the weakest part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they had like, I think it was like five different endings. For one of them, I think Corey survives in one of them. I think in a different one, they, um, like, the, well, the one that they chose is where they threw Michael into like what looked like an oversized paper shredder. But, um, yeah. <laughs> though I think there yeah. was like a different one where they like crucified him and burnt him at the stake, which I would have personally enjoyed because. Even like Einstein Tools say he's like the devil, so that would have yeah. been like symbolic or something. Absolutely. That would have been that would have been preferable to them just being like, okay, let's uh let's go mafia this guy and throw him in a <laughs> you know, in the uh this giant shredder. Um I one hundred percent agree with that. I, I I almost feel though, like if they would have just been like, Yeah, Michael actually died and Halloween kills and Corey's just, he found the mask and he's the new, he's the new Michael. Like yeah, well, if, if um, they were going to do that, I would have made preferred maybe just introduce Corey as like, like a little person in the background in kills in 2018, maybe yeah. just so that happens throughout the whole trilogy. And he doesn't just like pop up out of nowhere. And he's just like, okay, I hate Laurie now. So, um, hi, I have a knife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that film is just a bit all over the place, but I did love it on my first and second watch. Oh, mainly because yeah. I was on the Halloween hype after binge watching every movie. The kills in that movie were great. Uh, yeah. Like, fantastic. I, I do love your Art the Clown poster back there, too. I can't wait for Terrifier 3, man. Terrifier 2 is in, is in my current top 10 horror films. So, well, that's great. That's not a, like, modern franchise that people it's either love or hate. Like, some people just say that it's, like, garbage. Other people will classify it as, like, saw and hostile levels of weirdness and terribleness. But it's not even close to that. It's, like, art. Because he is art. Yeah. my How I see it is the what created the the way that a lot of people feel about horror right now it's not the stories it's not the the protagonists it is the antagonists that we latched on to that we want to wear on our shirts that we want to wear on our hats that we want to see on the big screen killing people like that's that is what and and it's not because you know in not in a weird way it's just we want to see these villains and have unique experiences with interesting villains that's like you can have the dumbest uh protagonists in the world that don't make any sense as long as you have an interesting antagonist and art is an extremely interesting antagonist yo know- that's kind of like my views on the Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. They're both good in their own right, but when they cross paths, that's when I really enjoyed it because oh. the, the Friday the 13th characters that, in that movie were absolute douchebags and I despised every single one of them. Like, yeah. they were all just <laughs> teenagers who were horny the whole time and I couldn't care less. So I was just more interested in, in the Nightmare on Elm Street kind of characters. Oh yeah, the, the Nightmare and Elm Street characters are always better. Friday the Thirteenth have n- very rarely. I'm not going to say never because there's a few times that they've given like unique personalities to yeah, you, to the teenagers, but it, it's been like three or four of the films. It, most of the films, it's the same characters. Every single person is the same character, and then Jason is a silent antagonist that is killing stupid characters so you don't even have you don't have an interesting antagonist and you have these cardboard cutout cookie cutter protagonists and it's it's all about the kills and in my opinion i know a lot of people love the kills in the friday the 13th films 
but I think they're underwhelming except for in like just a few of them. And uh, Jason X is actually one of them because these actually like you have, even though there are these over the top goofy characters, they're still like individuals. They all have their own personalities and they're interesting and in a way and then jason's just ridiculous and it's in space so it makes it ridiculous so it's just a fun movie to watch it may not be a good movie but it's still fun whereas if i watch you know one two one and two i'm just bored <laughs> you know yeah i mean that that liquid nitrogen killer in that movie was just awesome oh yeah it's fantastic and then now the remake like i i'm actually really sad that they didn't continue making movies after yeah. what, was it 2011 or 2013 something like that i think this one is 2009 is it 2000 okay 2009 i should say it somewhere like copyright paramount 2009 something. um i do not see it um you're probably right uh, it, it's somewhere in that that it's, time it's frame. 2000 like horror remake torture yeah. porn era of horror movies where everything was just excessively gory for utterly yeah. no reason. But it was great. <laughs> you know, it, that, but I'm still sad they never made my bloody Valentine 4D. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my bloody Valentine. And in, I love it. And that's, you know, the supernatural characters. You had Sam in Friday the 13th and then Dean and my bloody Valentine, which I love both of those actors, mainly just in Supernatural, though, except um, I was I know that's Jared. I always forget Dean's name is the actor's name. Um, <laughs> but anyway, he him getting out of horror, but the, the show, The Boys, have you ever seen it? Have you watched it? Um, I've watched like some of it. Gotcha. Yeah. It's over the top and ridiculous, and his character Soldier Boy in that is serious. Fantastic! He's amazing in that. Uh, he's in season two, I believe, and it's yeah, that character is great. But yeah, my buddy Valentine. I don't know, man. Um, getting sorry, I didn't mean to get off track or anything, but like getting back on track, like you know, I. It, it almost feels like if you have an opinion that the newer films that are that are being released um, are just lesser than than anything that was made in the 70s, 80s, 70s, 80s era of horror, then, you know, your opinion's just immediately invalid. And that's what it kind of feels like, like there's a lot of gatekeeping being done now it's not as bad as some fandoms i've been in other fandoms i love a lot of different things this is just my main things are horror anime and video games and there's gatekeeping in all three of them horror is actually not as bad as anime anime gatekeeping is a whole nother level but <laughs> but it just you know you, you try to make videos or you you want to talk about it in a group setting with people and if you're more of a fan of modern horror then you kind of just get kicked to the side uh for your opinion a lot of the time yeah well the really only only time i've done that with someone is when um i think it was one of my friends who hadn't even watched the um original scream said that he preferred um scream five oh. to it well, the only reason that that opinion is wrong, is not not your opinion, his opinion, is that uh, uh oh, dude, I'm so sorry, my brain keeps forgetting names, but uh, Shaggy from Scooby Doo, Matthew and Lillard, Matthew Lillard, yeah, anything he's in is just automatically amazing, so. Yeah. <laughs> I love Matthew he, Miller. I'm pretty sure he said that he would love to be in Scream 7 if they get it right. Yeah. Um, not that long ago, he was doing like an interview for FNAF. So, um... Oh, I, I love FNAF too. What, um, 
what's been your favorite horror movie so far this year? I've, I've watched like every major release of this year, so I probably have to quickly go on Letterbox to find um, the movies that I've watched this year. So I'll just quickly do that. But I'm pretty sure it'll either be... Um, what's the name of it? Um, Talk to me. Oh, dude, it's so good. It yeah, so like good. That, that's modern horror that I absolutely loved. Or it's 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 not going to be like the new screen movie. It's going to be Godzilla minus one. I haven't got to see it yet. That's one of the few big releases I haven't seen yet. Is Godzilla minus one? Uh, but I've heard amazing things about it um have you did you get to see it wasn't a major release but the argent argentine film argentinian film uh when evil lurks when evil lurks um i i i thought i heard that i, I didn't know that was an argentinian film i thought that was what no i'm thinking of speak no evil i'm not thinking of when evil oh. lurks um, yeah, now they are doing a, a an American, American remake. remake. Yeah, uh, now, even though that film is mainly in English as well. So yeah, it wait was it was yeah it was mainly in English. There was there wasn't there was like twenty percent Finnish and Dutch dialogue in that movie. Yeah, interesting. I uh, that's right. Man, I I did watch it last year. It just made me like I know that it was supposed to make you uncomfortable. But it it made me so uncomfortable that I don't know if I'm gonna watch the remake or not. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it, but you know, I haven't I, just... I haven't watched that film yet. But I'm probably gonna watch the remake because James McAvoy is in it and he's playing yeah. like the lead. So after watching Split and a bunch of his other movies, I'm probably just gonna watch it because I like seeing Professor X and stuff. But... Oh yeah, James McAvoy is he's amazing. Split was fantastic. I love Split. But uh, I didn't watch Glass. I need to watch it. But I have not watched that either. Yeah, I haven't watched Glass. I I just never got around to it. I don't I don't know why. But it, you know, is got Bruce Willis, James McAvoy, and uh, Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson. It just yeah, it's got to be at least half decent, you know. <laughs> but yeah, well, yeah. but uh. Yeah, man, my my favorite uh, horror movie so far this year has been Evil Dead Rise. Now, and then Talk to Me is my my number two. Um, but this year, like last year, man, probably the top five my top five films of last year beat every film that's coming out that's come out this year. last last year was so stacked with just amazing. Yeah horror it was insane but i am glad we're starting to get you know interesting slasher films like terrifier and thanksgiving and uh, they already announced thanksgiving 2 which is awesome eli roth did a really good job with that film it wasn't perfect but it was really good yeah it seems like movies which have come out this year that have been slightly successful because this year was not a good year for movies with the actors and writers strike and everything going on um but it seems like horror movies this year that was slightly or extremely successful in horror terms so that's like 100 million max but um have basically been guaranteed a sequel like saw 11 was announced the other day mm -hmm. uh, Thanksgiving 2's been announced. I'm pretty sure Talk to Me 2's also been announced. That was announced back in July. I didn't see that one, but that's awesome. Yeah, I'm hoping that like they just focus on a different limb in each movie. Like they had one hand, then it's yeah. not, what, probably be another hand, a foot, another foot, maybe a heart, a head. Hmm. That could be interesting. I and I'm not gonna just in case any of the viewers haven't seen it. I'm not going to spoil anything about talk to me, but the ending, you know, I said most endings are terrible, but the ending to that movie was so good. It was perfect. I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> when, when that movie ended, I was, I was actually stunned with how, how well they ended it. Just, you know, you don't see good 
and, and it's not just movies, it's, it's TV shows, it's books, you know, a lot of people just don't know how to end a story. And I mean, I, I probably wouldn't either, but, uh, that's difficult. That's why I, I try not to judge any, anything by its ending most of the time, because it, I know how difficult that could, that can be and very few people get it right. But talk to me, got it right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only film that I've judged the ending of this year has been Scream 6 because it's just Scream 2, but there's three killers. Yeah, Scream 6, and it and it wasn't even so much that for me. It was more of none of the characters, all the characters felt too safe. Yeah, and they also like set everything yeah. up for Stu's grand return. They had the entire like Ghostface cult idea that I would have loved. But I'm hoping that maybe in like a few years, like maybe like they take another year off of doing the franchise and they get Melissa Barrera and all of them back. Then they do the third one. It's like a kind of Scream 3 thing in Hollywood. And then Stu comes back because maybe like they're doing like a Netflix documentary series of all the guys, all the survivors, and then you can just like kill every single one of them. But then like, well, no, they kill him. Yeah, <laughs> that would be really cool. I, you know, I love the Scream franchise. Like I said, it's it's it, there's not a bad movie in the bunch. Um, it's just super consistent. What sucks is the two leads leaving, you know, and not knowing with leaving without a completed story, you know. Yeah. And I don't know how that how well that's going to play out you know, making a new movie, uh, how they're going to tie everything together in the story. But it is what it is. Uh, the writer's strike, the, and I remember the last big writer strike that was back. I was actually, um, like the, almost 10 the years. Early classes in like nineties or something like that. Well, there was, there was a writer's strike that happened, uh, it was like 13 years ago, 13 or 14 years ago, something like that. I was living in Florida and uh, I was like 20. I'm 35 now. There, yeah. Wait. No, I'm not. I'm 37. This happens to me all the time. <laughs> I'm 37. But uh, I'm 37. I was like 20, 22, 23 when the, the last big writer strike happened and uh, shows like Heroes got really messed up because of it, and uh, uh, Battlestar Galactica, like a lot of those stories ended up getting really like they went on like almost a year, year and a half break on some of these shows, and then the stories got really jacked up. They had to get all new writers and directors, and uh, it just it kind of ruined a lot of shows, which is fine. I under like I'm all for the writers being paid what they're supposed to be paid, which is why I kind of respect a 24 and they kind of, because they were just like, yeah, we'll just pay you. Like we don't want to take a break or anything here. Like, you know, that's why there was no disruption in any of a 24s films, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and that's what all these other production companies should have done. They, and instead they don't, they want to fight the unions and they want to try to, you know, get away with not paying people what they're worth. And then you got really stand up. Like I really respect a 24. I know a lot of people don't um, like, there's a lot of a 24 films that come out that people don't care for that much, but as a company, I think that they're one of the most respectable companies in the film industry right now. Yeah. 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 Well, I, th I think going back to like modern horror, classic horror, one like most recent editions of well modern horror just sort of being disregarded mm. is the actual like screen TV series. Oh dude. The Scream show that TV series was so good. Up I, until the third season. Yeah. The first okay. Yes. I don't think I even finished the third season to be honest. Uh but the first two seasons were great. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yes, you're right. But it was really good. Um, and then, oh, dude. 
talk about modern horror, like the gothic horror, like uh, uh, Haunting a Bly Manor. Oh, I just uh, I just finished watching um, what's it called? Um, Fall of the House of Usher. Oh, dude, it was so good. Um, what's that director's name? Mike Flanagan, the guy I made Doctor Sleep. He's the one guy who I can actually trust when it comes to modern horror movies. Because you are always guaranteed something good, whether you'll feel absolutely disgusted the entire way through or not. Oh yeah, I and. I really, I used to really love American Horror Story, but it's just kind of gotten, you know, repetitive, very, very repetitive, man. Like, and kind of boring. And, but we, uh, we still kind of have an American Horror Story because that's, that's what Mike Flanagan has been doing. He's using all the, basically, it's the same thing. It's just gothic horror instead of, you know, playing on different other horror tropes. So, you know, you had Hill House, Bly Manor, uh, Follow the House of Usher, um, and then his well, original story. Uh, yeah. uh, there was, was another it? one that he did. It was like, um, mm. there was Hill House, Bly Manor, um, Follow the House of Usher, and then there was Midnight Mass, which was like, Mass. The, like thing then, that Lady in Ush wrote. I mean, mm-hmm. Hush. Yeah, he wrote that, and then he made that into its own show, which is good. And then uh, Midnight Club. Then he did the Midnight Club too. Oh yeah, did not. Rem- I don't think I've seen that one. It's a, uh, it's a little bit different. It's more geared towards a younger audience um, than the, the other four are, but it's it's still really good. Uh, but yeah, we Mike Flanagan's that's modern horror at at its best, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like horror directors will just randomly make a kid's thing every now and then. Like, I remember my first interaction with an Eli Roth project was um, The House of a Clock in Its Walls, and I was terrified because I was like seven. Which I haven't seen that. Um, and yeah, I haven't seen that. <laughs> so I don't know if it's good or not. Um, but, oh, give me here, buddy. It is quite good, but it is just sometimes very odd at some points. Like yeah. there's a bit where Jack Black just randomly starts playing. I think it's a jazz instrument at like three in the morning. I think it was. Oh yeah. It was just a bit weird. Nice, and Jack Black is is a weird guy anyway. So it's, it's but you know when. Okay, I guess you can hang out. Um, when you've got, um, sorry, I lost track of what I was saying. Um, with modern horror, you know, you've got um, just so many amazing films coming out, and uh, like when I was talking about the the original Exorcist movie, that used to be known as the the scariest film ever made. And, you know, now our technology has come so far that whenever you're watching something that is older like that, if you still are getting scared of, uh, if you still feel fear to old technology, old sound design, you know, the even with the practical effects, because when you're watching it, it doesn't feel as realistic as I'm sure it did back then. So it's it is not the scariest movie ever made anymore because of how technology has progressed, how our minds perceive, you know, technology and visuals. There's if you still get scared by that, that's kind of weird because your brain should go. This is completely fake just because it looks outdated. You know what I mean? Even if the practical effects hold up your brain, it's like. You know, whenever I was a kid and the PlayStation 1 came out in the N64, and I'm like, oh my God, this looks like the most realistic thing I've ever seen in my life. And I play it now, and I'm like, this just looks like a bunch of polygons. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> this doesn't look real at all. What was I thinking? Especially like old PS1, the blocky, like everything's super blocky. Yeah. I used to think that those games 
were like just photorealistic when I was a kid. You know what I mean? And it's the same with old films. Like if you there's there's literally no way that The Exorcist can still be the scariest movie ever made. It might have been back when it was released, but it it's it's just not, you know. And so and, and now because it's not scary anymore, it's kind of just boring. And and those movies did scare me when I was a kid. Like but they don't anymore. And I'm, I'm a little like, I'm not hard to scare. I'm like, I'm kind of a little punk whenever it comes to like scary films, like actual, like supernatural, scary stuff. The conjuring freaks me out. It is actually scary. The exorcist does not because it's old and outdated. And my brain just doesn't see it as real, you know? Yeah. Well, that, I, think, I think the like biggest, um, thing where I've just been like, this doesn't look realistic at all was the other night when I was watching Candyman. The bit where he like comes in through the window in the psychiatric hospital, you like see the wire that Tony Todd is hanging from when they like pull him out of the window. <laughs> yeah. Now, and that's another thing right there. The new one is amazing. I loved the new Candyman. Um, but in the old films, I, I have a, a soft spot in my heart, of course, and nostalgia for all the films that I, that I did enjoy when I was growing up and that the neighborhood kids would like try to freak everybody out with, by being like, Oh, candy man, candy man, you know, or one, two, Freddy's coming for you. And like, you know, when I was a kid, all that scared me, but those old films, they, they're not scary anymore. They have a place of, you know, being able to look back and being like, you know, this was an amazing time for horror. This is what helped us gear up. Let me get this cat off me. Hold on. Uh, that helped us gear up for where we are now with horror, which is one of the most free and dynamic genres in film there's no other genre that can do what horror does and i think that that's amazing and it gets snubbed every year at the oscars uh, people have a very there's still you know a lot of people that have a very low opinion of horror but it is the most expressive the most dynamic genre that exists and it, it in fantasy fantasy does as well because you can pretty much do whatever you want in a fantasy film as well but you have to follow you know you your hero kind of has to win in a fantasy novel or or movie but in a horror you don't know and it doesn't matter who the winner is at the end you can just do whatever you want and i think that that's really awesome and now we have some of the best actors in hollywood that are like almost begging to be in horror films, especially like a 24 films. Like Mia goth is becoming one of the greatest, greatest actors. I love, yeah. Yeah. Jenna Ortega is becoming one of the greatest actors of this generation, you know, and I love it. I love seeing it. Um, I just hope that, but it, the other thing is, is in the next in another 30 years people are probably going to look back and be like oh yeah the 2020s they were one of the greatest times in in horror history and kind of have the same uh probably have the same issue going on again that we do with the 70s and 80s or you know yeah now i understand if you're growing up in the nineties and the two thousands going horror is not like it used to be, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is understandable. And, but once we hit the 2010s, like they hit the ground running with the 20, with some of the 2010s horror, you know, in like the 2013, 2014 and just onwards since then, we've had some of the greatest horror films ever made get out us, you know, 
Jordan, uh, Jordan Peele coming in, making some just crazy films that nobody was expecting from a comedian. Um, yeah, I mean, Sh- Shaun of the Dead is another one that, like, uh, Cabin in the Woods, one of my absolute favorite films of all time. Like, I love that movie. Um, Pearl, like, holy crap. I was not expecting <laughs> Pearl at all. And Mia Goss' monologue at the end of that movie is one of my favorite things ever to be put on film. Like, I don't know. Well, I don't think anyone even expected Pearl in the first place because everyone just went to see X because it's like, uh, it's got all these young, popular actors in it. And then at the end, it's like, Pearl trailer of the film that was filmed back to back with this that yeah. no one knew about. Yeah. And then you're like, well, if it's, if they filmed both of them at the same time, like, there's, it's not going to be that good, right? Or it's going to be, you know, on and the same that level. Turns out as that. Be better than the first one. Yeah, it was. It was so good, so good. And Bruce, come on, man. <laughs> he is really wanting my attention right now. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, and then you got. Uh, then you had the. Uh, you had the All Hallows Eve movies. Did you ever watch those? Um, that I have Art the Clown in them. I think I watched the first one. I didn't watch the second one because it didn't have Art on the poster, so I didn't think Art was in it. I don't think he is in it actually. Uh, I don't. He might have made like a random appearance or something. I, I don't remember it very well. That one was kind of boring. Uh, but even the first one was. It, it was a starting point. Like, you know, it was people wanting to get the funding to make good films. And they had they had an idea and a starting point. And then you get the first Terrifier, which is just gore. Like, there's really no yeah, story to no it. And it it's all characters yeah. of meat sacks, basically. Yeah. But Art the Clown was good enough to carry that film. And that's that's what I mean by this amazing like if there's a good enough antagonist that people can latch on to doesn't matter if the the film is actually the rest of the film is good enough it's just once they attach onto that character then we're good to go you know and i i'm amazed that they were able to get the kind of funding that they got to be able to do terrifier 2 which turned out to be amazing for them you know and yeah, I can't wait for the future of that franchise. Um, and then the future, I, Maxine, like, I'm... Yeah, well, that, that movie's got so many good actors. And then it's got Giancarlo Esposito. It's got um, Mia Goth. It's got Kevin Bacon, who I know from E Abs here in the UK. But, um, of course, he does Tremors and the first Friday the 13th and a bunch of other stuff. So yeah. I didn't want to see him in that. Yeah, yeah, Maxine's gonna be unreal. Um, what were the there's some uh, Nosferatu remake? Oh, yeah, coming out this week. Nosferatu coming out. I think it comes out the same like weekend as Terrify 3, or it comes out the same weekend as a different horror movie. But I know that it's coming out like the same day as a, another horror movie. but... I'm pretty sure that has like Bill Skarsgård as most for us. Who it has? It does have Bill. I think it has. Um, what's his name? Nicholas Holt from the other great band oh, yeah. that came out recently. Beast, yeah. But, but I'm I'm kind of waiting for the Crow remake that's coming oh, out. Yeah. I did watch the Crow recently. And um, I want to see where that goes, because if it is, I know that it is just the Eric Draven story again, but I want to see that with a bigger budget and just like all practical effects and visual effects and cool stuff in it. Yes. I believe that they're using uh, a different, they're not going to do the same story that they did with Brandon Lee. 
uh, out of respect for him, if I remember correctly. I think they're going to use one of the, because, you know, in one of the other comic book story points uh, for the film. But yeah, I'm, I love the original Crow movie. Uh, it was really tragic that, you know, that cut short Brandon Lee's life. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, he would have been amazing in Hollywood. Yeah, that's a tragedy. Oh yeah. I think that's like one of the like more recent like '90s movies that I've watched recently, which I actually enjoyed. Yes. Yeah, that's that was just a great movie. Talk about you know comic book films. That's that's up there. <laughs> That yeah, like, there's there's so many like random comic book movies that are just absolutely horrible. Like some of the recent Marvel and DC stuff that came out recently. But the Batman was really good. Yeah, I I liked it, but I didn't see why it had to be like a billion hours long. <laughs> I had left halfway through. I was falling asleep and. <laughs> This is uh, boring. I get that. No, I I get that. <laughs> it was really good though. Yeah, it was super long. But yeah, uh, that the last movie that I just watched, I finally watched uh, last voyage, last voyage of the Demeter, which has a fantastic oh, yeah. cast in it. But man, like it's not even that long. I think it's under two hours but yeah it's it's like i think it's like 120 minutes yeah so it wasn't hour. it wasn't bad but it felt it felt like a real movie to me i was man that was the last movie i just i finally caught up on that one um and it has a fantastic cast i uh sir davos from uh game of thrones uh as the captain in that movie uh I'm really bad with actors' names. I usually just remember character names. But yeah, I can't really remember that movie. I just remember that I enjoyed it, and that was about it. I can remember <laughs> that film. And yeah, it was enjoyable. I think that it would have served them better if they would have taken some risks, though. Um, maybe done just something outside of the box, and it just felt like. They're like, we have a diagram for what a good movie looks like, and let's just follow, let's just check all the boxes, and then we'll put the movie out. And it's like, yeah, you made a good movie, but it's not memorable, you know. Like you just said, you you really don't remember the movie, you just remember you liked it. <laughs> like, there's nothing that holds, like, that just creates that moment in your mind where you're like, yes, like, this is, this is a good film, you know. You know, if we're talking about, like, long movie, the longest movie that I watched this year was Oppenheimer. That film did not feel three hours long. I was... It was it was just awesome. Yeah. I did not watch Oppenheimer yet. I'm going to. Uh, I chose instead to watch the Barbie movie. <laughs> that was... I was like, I have limited funds at the moment. I got to choose one. So I uh, chose Barbie and it was fantastic. My girlfriend really liked it too. And we had a blast with that. Yeah. I, I didn't really enjoy it, but that's because I'm not really the target audience for the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, like, it's based on like a children's doll. It's more targeted towards like 20, 30 year old women more than yes. like kids. It, it's kind of, it's a very millennial movie. It's yeah, millennial. it's for millennials. Yeah, hundred percent. That's yeah, my age group definitely love that movie. Um, as far as oh, now on the flip side of uh, modern horror, what do you what did you think of uh, Skin of a Rink? Did you see it? I didn't like it at all. People were saying it's so scary. It's like the most horrific, terrifying movie of the year. I just like sort of sat there bored. 
to the point where I just paused it halfway through and started scrolling through YouTube because I got bored. Dude, I did the same thing. It that was the hardest movie for me to to make it through. I think it took me three days to actually finish the film. <laughs> it, for real, man. Like I, I have a really hard time staying focused watching movies as it is if there's nothing interesting about it and that movie was so hard to watch and it it kills me because i i think it was uh rolling stone uh top 10 horror movies of the year or something like that it was number one on their list and i've seen a couple of other people put it in the top three i'm just like it's literally in my bottom three horror films of this year you know. you know, like well, I'm doing like my list for my the best and the worst movies of the year, which I have already recorded and are probably going to come out like slightly before this video comes out. It's I just I didn't like that in the slightest. Dude, it was it was so bad, and that is the flip side of horror because you of modern horror because you have these people that are trying to make elevated horror, and it's not. I don't. I don't call it elevated horror because that's not really what it is to me. What what we are starting to get is the as a true evolution of horror in the fact that more money is being pumped into the genre. That's the yeah. that's what is elevating the horror is we have people that actually care about it that are pumping money into it and we're getting really good stories because of that and we're getting really good filmography and really good actors because of that and but then you do have the people that are like we're gonna make this really artistic thing and try something weird and new but it did not work for me <laughs> no, like the, yeah. the arty kind of stuff that's like 70s texas chainsaw massacre stuff but yeah. elevated i do agree with you that is where all the money's just being shoved into things like Paramount opened their own division just for horror movies. And I'm pretty sure like wasn't it like Orphan First Kill came out in like 2021 from Paramount? That was Orphan Franchise is a great example of like modern horror classics. Oh, Those yeah. movies are amazing. Yeah. First kill was so good. I I was shocked um that she was able to come back and portray that role as you know, yeah. as well as she did, uh, and actually make her look still like a child. Like a child, yeah. That was that was really good. I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, the first Orphan movie is good. Uh, I think I actually prefer First Kill though between the two. Of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I prefer it as well, but that's another film that's been a sequel to Orphan Three is coming out. But mm -hmm. my question is, are they gonna have like? I don't know, like a zombie kind of thing, like just not like have Esther be a zombie, but like have no mask of that and just have a like, like if it begins with like the ending of the first movie, then it focuses in on the frozen lake, and then like it's her, like cracking out of the out of the ice. Cause, Maybe. Or is it just gonna be another prequel? Because how young are they going to make um this this girl in the next movie? Because. Isabel Furman's in her twenties. She's not a twelve-year-old child anymore. She's she, she's not going to be able to do these movies forever. I mean, they they made her look really good for First Kill. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. But man, um, if, I think what I read somewhere that it is actually a sequel. That there, it's not a prequel. Um, I could be wrong, but I believe I read that. Uh, I read a lot of stuff, so I, I could be wrong about that. But yeah. if it is a sequel, it'll be interesting uh, because they are developing yet another uh, horror villain that could become, you know, iconic, like truly, truly iconic. I don't think, I, I think it's mostly people in the, the horror community that know who Esther is and, you know, people out. it's when they become iconic is when they are known to outside groups, you know? Yeah. So like Chucky, for example, yeah. like in the nineties, he was like the biggest thing ever. I'm pretty sure he was even like a presenter on a WWE thing for 
a oh. little while. Yeah, and then uh, Freddie, like he had, he would do like commercials or like show up on. Uh, uh, Robert England would actually show up on like uh, talk shows and stuff like that and do do interviews as Freddie. You know, and yeah, everybody knows who Jason is too. Even though they get a lot of people outside of get Jason and Michael confused a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> And everyone knows Ghostface, even if it's not related to the Scream franchise. Yeah. I knew who Ghostface was like seven years old because I watched like the saddest movie ever, Wonder. It's just like the saddest movie I've like, probably ever watched. But they have Ghostface in it, so. Oh, really? I've yeah. never watched the movie. I'll have it's, to. It is very good, but it is very sad. Hmm. I just have to Wonder? say that. Wonder from 2017. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Sad movie. I can cry a little bit. That's fine. <laughs> I don't think I've ever cried in a movie except when I was like 10 and I watched like, I was at a friend's sleepover and you have to seem cool at a sleepover or else, you know, what's the point of going? Yeah. So he put on like, a horror film that we didn't know the name of and I didn't know the name of and still can't remember the name of. I just remember it was very, very gory. <laughs> I should not have watched that at 10 years old. Yeah. I mean, same. I, I, I think the first time I saw Friday, or not Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, the first one, I was like eight or nine. And yeah, like, what we do house. recently is staying up late. Yeah. And turning on the TV and flicking through all the channels to see if there are any horror stuff on. And then I will go back to my room, set an alarm, and wake up at that time and go back downstairs and watch them. Then I'll just go back upstairs and go to sleep. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, I, what's crazy is, is, you know, I'm, I'm on that, I'm the age group that, was kind of like the last one to kind of grow up a little bit without the internet and computers and uh, instant access to a lot of stuff. So I remember doing that kind of stuff a lot whenever I was younger, like getting the TV guide and being like, okay, when what's going to, what's going to come out and what time and all that. And I uh, did the same thing, set alarms to be able to go start my V my VCR to record. <laughs> so I could have a, a tape of it. And, uh, but now like I just lay in bed, I flick through, uh, all my different streaming services to see what's available. And if the thing that I want to watch isn't on there, then I find other means on my phone pretty easily. You know, it's, it, everything is just instant access and it could still be in theaters and you're like, okay, I got this. <laughs> like, you know, and uh, just being able to do that is, is kind of crazy now. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, yeah. if you love something though, if you want to support it, please go watch it in theaters, you know, support yes. your, please, all please the filmmakers. Watch it in theaters. I do not, <laughs> we do not endorse yeah. piracy on this channel, whether or not, yes, some people do it. That, that, that's up. To, that's up to them. Yeah. I'm just. I was making a an observation about what is what the capabilities of today's generation has, you know, and even being able to just everything's just now, 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 now. I love going to the movie theater and yeah. sitting and watching watching movies. Uh, even though the last time me and me and a good friend of mine we went to uh, see Thanksgiving. And uh, and just had a really not great experience in the theater. Like there was a group, two different groups of people that were talking very loudly. And then a third group started throwing popcorn at one of the groups that was talking. And then they started yelling at each other. And then the, the people that worked there came in and like took the group one group out but then they were like that when they're coming in they have these flashlights and they're shining them in my face and everybody else's face being like who is it <laughs> and i'm just like bro i just want to watch the movie 
that's, 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 that's never happened to me, but it would be something that I would laugh so, so, so much at if that happened to me. I think the closest that's happened to me was when I went to watch FNAF, and I was I was with my friend, and we were sat next to these, like, I think 18, 19 year olds, and they were all just sort of like messing around the whole time and making like noises from the games and stuff the entire time. It's it's horrible, man. Like, yeah. I'm like, why, why did you want to come do this? Why? Even when I, you know, even when I was their age, I've always been a huge movie fan. So even when I was when your age. 15 16 17 like and i went to the movies at, like i was there to watch the movie i wasn't there to to act silly or cause a scene i wanted to see the movie <laughs> i came here for that purpose like is if you don't want to watch a movie don't come like that's kind of how i feel about it uh, but yeah it was it was pretty bad now that doesn't happen at the, I go to that movie theater all the time. That doesn't happen all the time. I, I think what it is is normally I go to movies on release day. And I wasn't able to do that for Thanksgiving. It was like three weeks after the release. And uh, so it's it's not people that actually care as much. It's probably just people that are like, we don't well, have anything else to do. Yeah. They just were like, ah, it's Friday night. Let's go watch it some random movie you know yeah it's probably what happened but yeah oh and thanks oh, thanksgiving was so fun like it has it needed some some work on I, so have you ever seen the show suits no okay it's it's a show about lawyers and there's a a lawyer on there called Lewis Litt, the character, and he is that actor is um I forgot the actor's name, but it's it's the guy, it's the dad that owns the store. That that actor. Um he in suits is my absolute favorite character, and he's like narcissistic and but at the same time like cares about all the people around him and just neurotic and just has a lot of energy and just an amazing character and i watched the movie i'm like why didn't you utilize him just a little bit more it, it felt like the the adult character like the people that he got for the adults were just far superior to the to the the young actors. Well, yeah, they he were, got a TikToker to play the main character. I'm pretty sure, didn't he? I believe, I believe so. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I think so. Which is fine. Like she was, she was fine. Like she wasn't bad. It's was just, I don't know. They could have done a lot better with that. With just the actors, that was really my only issue with the movie. Was and it, they weren't even bad. They just weren't weren't amazing i don't know maybe next time we got another one coming yeah maybe with thanksgiving too but with with movies i usually just wait for the dvd release date and i i just love just going into like my like local store that has like movies and dvds and stuff here in the uk it's going to be hmv and they just have like a row of horror dvds that i just like looking at i, I of course like some older people that I've spoken to, they just love like going into like a blockbuster and just looking at all the like covers for the horror movies. That's, that's why I do. Man, so here in the at least where I live, you know, I, I live in the I live in Arkansas now, which it's a southern state. It's in the southern part of the United States, and we're kind of there's not any kind of rental store here anymore which I'm, I kind of miss, I'd like, I really miss that feeling. Like you would walk into a blockbuster or we had a movie gallery. It was another big one that was here. And uh, I think silver screen or something like that was another one that we had. Um, but even, 
opposed to the, the separate from those, there was another like mom and pop rental store, which was my favorite one. It was called Aardvark Video. And um, anytime I went in there, it was a young dude that owned it. He was probably in his 20s. Like this is back in the 90s, you know. So he was in his 20s. And like I would go in there as just a young dude and being like, what do you recommend? And that's like he gave me like he he's the reason I got interested in anime. Like I ended up watching a bunch of anime movies that he recommended. He's the reason why I got into like uh, sci-fi because I ended, he's like, here, watch this crazy movie. And he handed me the matrix, which I was like, Oh, what is this? <laughs> you know, watch the, well, the first matrix. The matrix. Just give me a moment. I actually happen to have the VHS copy of the matrix. Oh, nice. I have it here somewhere. I just have to find it. I cannot find it. I cannot find it, but um, I, will, I, will, I will find that. <laughs> um, but now, like, there's not any place like that here. If you want to go get a movie, you go to Walmart. Or I actually, so my day job, I'm a pawnbroker. I work at a pawn shop. And uh, we, we buy and sell one of the, the major things that we actually still buy and sell is DVDs. And, uh, but we, we buy them for a quarter, uh, and then sell them for a dollar, you know, all, and people will come in they'll be like, they'll hand me a hundred dollar bill. And they're like, I'm going to go pick out a hundred movies, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, cool, go. But anytime, uh, horror movies come in that I don't own, like I start snatching them up and i you know, my boss lets me buy them for 75 cents, you know, and, and so that's really fun. And I like going to like thrift stores and, uh, uh, flea markets and stuff like that and buying up, like looking through their DVDs and finding like off the wall, interesting things and getting those half of them. I never watch because I know they're going to be bad. <laughs> so I just, I just like to have them. Yeah, you know, in my collection. <laughs> yeah. That's what happened with me. I bought a guy's um, horror collection. That's actually what led me to owning a um, rental copy of Cabin Fever, which is really cool in my opinion. But um, That's really cool. it's and like there were like there's like a billion films in there that I still cannot be bothered to see because they just don't look good. Oh, dude. I, I get it, man. Like, I, and it's, it's always like these, you're like, where did this movie come from? Who made this movie? Like you look at it and you're like, is it, is, was this made by a college student? Like what? <laughs> That's what happened with me and Thanks Killing when I watched that. I still, I could not be bothered to release the video for that, which is the only reason I watched that movie. I just could not be bothered because I just, I was, it was just like a long moan of me just moaning about the movie and how much I didn't like it. So I just sort of turned it off. <laughs> I, just, I just deleted it. Dude, I've done that a couple times. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually made a a, mo a video on my YouTube channel. And a lot of that has to do with I started working uh, two jobs. And I was working like 70 hours a week. <clears throat> and... Uh, I just didn't have time and but i finally i'm still working two jobs but it's not nearly as many hours uh so I've, i'm finally to the point and i've been gearing up my my i'm gonna start january 1st back and putting out my first new video on january 1st it's gonna be a complete ranking of all the uh 2023 released horror films um that's so far i think i'm at 68 View watched for the year 2023 releases. Um, I don't think I've watched that many horror films, like new horror films this year. I've definitely watched that many horror films this year. I've watched about 65 new movies that came out this year. Nice. I've watched probably 100 2023 release movies. <laughs> um, uh, but most of them were horror films. Like, even uh like my one of my 
my friends, he tried to get me to watch something else, but I was like, I was like, dude, like I'm getting ready to make this video. Like I've got to use my spare time <laughs> to, to, to watch the horror movies. Like I'll watch it at the beginning of the year. How about that? And he's like, Oh, but yeah, I've, I've been using almost all of my downtime to just catch up on all the 2023 release horror films. I probably, uh, out of those 68 that I've watched, probably 50 have been in the last like two months. Yeah, but I'm I'm still getting around to watching Saw X. It's got like almost a 90 on Rotten Tomatoes, which is why I want to watch it. I just don't have the time to sit here and watch a two hour long Saw movie. That, that like I'm good with a 90 minute long one, but two two and a half hours is a bit much for me. I promise you, if you watch it, you will not feel that way. I because I don't really care for the Saw franchise, but that movie is not a Saw movie. It has moments of Saw being a Saw movie, but it's like it's actually a good movie. Like just as you know, the story itself, it's it's in my top ten for the year. It's not my not uh one, two, three, four, five, six. it's actually number ten. Number for me, which is out of 68, like you know, um, it's actually a really good movie. I was, I was shocked. I, I was like, uh, I don't know if you uh watch like Cody Leach, and uh, he's a big uh horror YouTuber. Um, I would check him out. He's, I, I don't agree with all of his opinions, but he has uh some really good takes on horror films. Um, but he, he was like, this is the best saw movie ever made. It's just a good movie. I was like, okay, I guess I'll check it out. And yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. I, I think you would actually like the movie. I'll probably watch it tomorrow then. Cause I've, I finally finished my time of school tomorrow. So I can finally, actually edit a bunch of videos nice yeah that's that's kind of where i'm at that was the main thing it's like yeah i can sit down and record a you know a 10 minute video but it's going to take me an hour or two to to actually edit and get rid of all the the ums and ahs and <laughs> yeah because i don't i never write a script yeah i never write a script or anything i just sat down i'm like okay i'm just gonna i'm gonna free ball this real quick and see what happens <laughs> <laughs> most of the time i have a script like with the last two videos which is like the jack frost and jack frost 2 um which i despised with every piece of my soul um that is in there but um i just hated that film but, um for those two films i just I just sort of recorded them, then just spent ages editing them. No, oh, yeah. It was just too. Yeah, I, dude, I understand, one hundred percent. And like, I sit down. That's that's the part that I actually hate most, and what has kept me from making like pro, like producing a lot of videos is the editing portion of uh, being being a t content creator and. I just don't, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm 37. I don't have the drive anymore to, if I was, if I was your age, yeah, I'd probably have 200 videos on YouTube, you know, but I don't know. Maybe not. 200, yeah. I'm, I'm only on like 186 as of recording this. No, I think I have <laughs> like 30 or something, you know, if that, a lot of them are shorts. Yeah. And I, I was I was starting to come to because I was trying to do whenever you're doing movie reviews, uh, I realized this, too. Whenever you're doing movie reviews, the amount of for one video, I would watch sometimes 15 movies. And I'm like, the amount of time it took me to watch all of those films 
and then make the video and do it, do this, do this video. I'm like, can I justify that? You know, with, with my work schedule and being able to take care of my family and, you know, do all that. But, you know, my girlfriend is extremely supportive of me. We've been together for almost nine years now. And, um, she's like, you know, whatever, you know, if this is what makes you happy, then go for it. And so I'm going to start, start it back up again. Cause it's, it's one thing that actually I do just truly enjoy, you know, is I try doing anime reviews too. I made an anime review channel, but I didn't, I didn't enjoy it nearly as much. And I just, I love horror movies. It's my, when I have like three hours of downtime where I'm like, okay, I can do something. It's usually going to be put on a horror movie and watch it. You know? Yeah. I, I'm not really like the biggest anime guy. The two that I've watched has been Death Note and the Pokemon anime. Cause I was a big Pokemon guy. But, um, I just don't think, I'm ever going to be able to like sit through like a thousand plus episodes of one show. But I, I, can, I can barely sit through a season of Rick and Morty, not yet alone a thousand episodes of One Piece. Oh, so my girlfriend just finished One Piece for the first time yesterday. She <laughs> it took four months for her to watch a thousand. <laughs> almost 1100 episodes. I think it's like 1,068 episodes or something like that is what it's at now. I, I, I don't know for sure, but yeah, it took four months for her to do that. But she, it is, I finally talked her into watching it and she, she watched all every single episode of one piece. <laughs> recently. I think that's less. Um, in fact, no, I think that's more episodes than family guy and family guys been going since like the nineties. And that was going since like in the middle of the two thousands. Uh, One Piece is ninety eight. Oh, it's twenty. It's twenty five years old. Yeah. All right, yeah, because Netflix is doing like that twenty fifth anniversary reimagining anime that's coming out soon. Yeah, they're doing uh the first arc, so it's it's basically what they already did with the live action. So everything that was in the live action, um, but they're gonna do the anime part of it and. They're, that's the only part that they've guaranteed that they're going to reanimate is that because the animation's 25 years old, you know. Yeah. So they're, it's a, um, they're just trying to modernize the animation because it is very difficult for people to get started in that show because of how old the animation looks, you know, and that's. That was that was me when I tried to start in South Park from the first episode. Because that was made in actual cardboard. Yeah. And then I watched the most recent episode, which I think was a special into the Pandaverse. Yeah. And it's there's a, there's a very significant there's a very significant difference between proper like CGI and animation and all of that stuff and then the cardboard act. animation. Yeah, it's all still like still frame, like yeah, it animation. is very impressive though how they were able to do that. Oh yeah, no, it was great. I, but yes, that is it is difficult to watch old South Park if you're not used to it. Absolutely, like yeah, the, the comedy style has also like completely changed. Like before, they were doing like I think it was like toilet humor in the first three seasons, and then in like season four they changed to racism. Season five they changed to anti-Semitism. And then from beyond, they just sort of did everything else that could offend someone. Oh yeah, the the Trey and uh, I forgot the other guy's name, but they they don't hold back on anybody, man. Like Trey and Matt. People, Trey and Matt, yeah, Trey and Matt. They don't hold back. I I actually really respect those guys a lot. When they yeah. went to uh, because they got invited to the the Oscars one year. I believe I think it was not, it was for the the movie. It was for yeah, the South Park, movie, South yeah. Park movie. They got invited to the Oscars. They got and they went. I think they said they dropped acid before they went. And like, <laughs> yeah, didn't they like swear so much at the Oscars? <laughs> yeah, they were just like out of their mind <laughs> the whole time. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that's because 
I think it's Trey, but he's the guy who wants to do all this integrity weed stuff with Randy. So yeah. that could have been why they were all weird that day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Integrity. <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny. You know, I'm, I'm a pawn broker. There's another pawn shop in town that's called Integrity Pawn. And we, <laughs> so at the shop, we always go down to Tangerty Pond. <laughs> yeah, like, and we're from Arkansas, man. So, like, people actually talk like that here, yeah. you know, where they have very southern accents. I, uh, I did not adopt that. <laughs> I did not adopt that way of speaking. And I grew up here, but I did not adopt that. I, I'm sure you can hear it a little bit but i yeah it's not here you can hear it a little bit yeah 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 i it's not my uh my best feature <laughs> well i mean i i moved um back to england from spain after four years so i you, you can't tell that there's any spanish in my accent unless i'm actually speaking spanish but, oh yeah I have not adopted the proper English accent yet. I just, I don't like accents. Mine's just sort of a mix of American because I grew up in the Caribbean. Oh, did you? And yeah. English just shoved into one. Interesting. That's a cool life though, man. You got to live in the Caribbean and Spain, like, and then the UK. Like, that's pretty cool, man. I would love to, like, one of my one thing that I want to do is go to like the Mediterranean parts of uh, Spain and uh, France. And then also I would love to go like over to Brittany, that part of France on the coast there. I, basically, I just want to go to the ocean in, in Europe. <laughs> the ocean is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go to the Mediterranean and the ocean in Europe. Like that's, and then, uh, of course, I, I want to see London. I've never been outside of the U.S. really, except for uh, I was like three or four, I think, when we went to Mexico when I was a kid. Like, and I, so I don't remember it. But yeah, but the U.S. is so big, man, that like I haven't been to all of the U.S. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've been uh, through most of the southern states. Um, my favorite place that we went, though, was uh, I went up to boston massachusetts and uh over into salem and i just we had a blast there that would get to see all the old for united states buildings you know from the 1700s and stuff that was fun but yo yo i mean the united states is actually like 50 countries just shoved into one uh, yeah and really it's it's more than that because we have uh five territories that we own as well uh with guam uh the virgin islands uh puerto rico uh i don't remember all of them but yeah it's massive it's ridiculous but yeah we sorry i didn't mean to get off on other tangents and stuff i just realized we probably haven't even talked about horror for like 20 minutes now I was doing the same thing. It's, it's, it's <laughs> just having a conversation, man. With it, it's not often that you get to have a conversation with somebody across the across the world. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's more often now, of course, because we have technology to do so. But it's uh, now I'm glad that you you hit me up. I I was uh very uh honored that you saw my videos and you thought that like i, I want to talk to this guy like that that made me feel very good thank you <laughs> yeah uh you know i i uh i never and i know you know i don't have very many subscribers or anything but i never really thought you know Somebody's gonna be that interested in what I had to say, you know. I'm mainly interested in what basically everyone has to say because I I talk to every single person I possibly can. 
because I like hearing people's views on stuff. I like hearing, which is why I also do like horror movie reviews and stuff because I just like hearing other people's thoughts on them and everything like that. Well, that's awesome, man. That's a that's a good way to be. I uh, <clears throat> I do actually like most people's uh, want to hear most people's opinions. It's uh, the only time that I get. It's whenever they try to like be like, if your opinion is not the same as mine, then you don't belong here. <laughs> then I'm just kind of like, okay. Like, I'm only like that when it comes to very few specific movies. Oh, yeah. Which, what movies? Well, it'll either be um, Marvel movies because I despise most of the recent ones that they've done, but then you have. Marvel's extremely toxic fan base who will go, it's amazing. What are you talking about? Yeah. Or it's Star Wars fandom. They, they, hate their, they hate their own like movies. Which fandom? Star Wars. Oh, Star Wars. Dude, like, I don't get that because it's like the original, th you can only, you're only allowed to like the original three. You can't yeah. like any other Star Wars movie. Just the original three. I just no. have to um, show off quickly since you're talking about the original Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Got, yeah like, oh, dude, is that? VHS edition of all the original movies. Are those the, those are the remasters, right? They're not the, yeah. they are the remasters. Man, if you find the original not remastered, A New Hope. VHS, those are worth some money. Not just a ton of money, but they're worth some good money. I uh either those or the uh the laser disc uh for the, a new hope can be worth some money. But yeah, I dude, I, I love all this. I actually like all nine Star Wars movies. I I don't have and then I yeah. love solo. I love solo, like that movie was great, and then uh what was the other one? Uh, it was Rogue. Rogue One. Rogue, Rogue One. One. Yeah, I love all of them. Like they're just great movies. Uh, they're just fun to watch. Like I don't have my, I, but I've never been like just a diehard Star Wars fan. I just enjoy watching them. You know, my girlfriend's got a a Rebel Alliance. Uh, symbol tattooed on her leg with this with the next wing flying up into it. So she is a diehard <laughs> Star Wars fan, but I I am not. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean I've not really disliked any Star Wars media. I think the only one that I haven't watched is mainly just, it's just all the animated stuff because it's very hard to keep up with animated TV show that was running on Disney's Children Channel. Yeah. And then movies where they are like kind of dark, but these, no one really thinks about it. But this is like World War Two in space, basically. Like you got, oh yeah, like you got um like the Empire, and then you got like rebels trying to like fight back against them. Yeah, I was one hundred percent like that, and. And then in the new ones, you've got, you know, uh, is it patricide? Is that patricide where mm -hmm. the son kills the father? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. I've never heard of that word, but um, yeah. I think I, it's I, I, patricide. I was so when they did that to Han Solo. <laughs> just... Yeah. 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 I was just sad. I. Uh, so, have you ever read the expanded universe books? Uh, no. The now Disney, of course, says now that none of those are canon. But um, you know, the expanded the there was the Thrawn trilogy was the first. The, it happened. It's the next set of story that comes after um, uh, Return of the Jedi, and that trilogy is fantastic. And it's it sets up a really good story, and then you have uh, the Jedi Academy trilogy that comes after that, which is really good too. 
And I wish they would have made those into movies, but it would have been really difficult to get, you know, because of how, how old Mark Hamill and um, Han Solo. <laughs> I can't remember names today, man. <laughs> I'm on Letterboxd at the moment. My phone's just like been left on Letterboxd. I think Harrison Ford. I just Harrison Ford. Harrison yeah. Ford. Yeah. yeah. Harrison Ford. You know, uh, all of them, Carrie Fisher, uh, you know, for them, they wouldn't be able to reprise their roles because of the characters. Are, it's literally like just a few years after everything that happened in uh, Return of the Jedi for the Thrawn trilogy. But they, they're just really, I think that the, the, the Thrawn trilogy books and the Jedi Academy books are some of the best stories ever told in the Star Wars universe. And I wish they would have made those in the films, but it's okay. They did use Thrawn in uh, the animated show. The Clone Wars or is it um, the other one? They were like two animated um, ones. I don't remember. I just know that he, I, I never really watched them. I just know that he shows up at one point. Thrawn does. He, he's uh, <clears throat> an Imperial general that's actually not human. He's actually an alien, which is very rare in the Empire because they're like <laughs> humans are the superior race. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, so he and he's that he's extremely intelligent and dangerous um, individual. But yeah, I wish they would have done something like that, but I think that the movies we got were good. You know, I I'm excited to see where they go with the, with Star Wars. Um, I just hope that Disney <clears throat> can finally start getting the point that we want some variation in our storytelling because it's and it's not that anything that they're making is bad. It's just that it's all the same. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, this is good, but you've told me this story already. <laughs> like, like uh, can I get something different? Like, and kind of DC starting to follow in the same foot footsteps. I, I tried to watch Blue Beetle, but it it's felt like a Marvel film. You know? Yeah, it isn't bad, but it feels yeah. like kind of like Phase Two Marvel movie, like Ant Man or something like that. Yeah. It, it, that's exactly what it felt like and i was i was watching i'm just like i mean this is fun but like i've, I've already seen this movie 10 times now so. yeah all right well thank you for joining yeah. me in this video oh um, yeah thank you thank you everyone for watching please go check out horror and stuff on youtube but he is going to be returning um you say january 1st January 1st, I'm going to probably upload um, upload the video December 31st. And so it should be live either that night or early in the morning, January 1st. All right. Well, everyone, please go check out that video and check out his channel. Um, subscribe and check out his other video. Thank you for watching this video. I'm going to see you guys next time. Until then, goodbye.